Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance, Anthony here, please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're happy with what you're seeing and want to see more. So this video is quite upsetting to most Super League clubs that's going on at the moment um, as the Super League ha and the Rugby Football League have gone a direction that has upset not three but five Super League clubs and other clubs outside of the top tier. So we're going to talk about the academy licensing announcement that the Super League have done, uh, Rugby Football League have done in the last few days. Um, according to their statement, eight clubs from the Betfred Super League and two from the Betfred Championship have been awarded elite licenses for 2022 to the 2027 seasons, having de demonstrated that they have they achieved the elite standards required by the process. Okay. So that means. At this point, there have been 10 licenses given out to be elite academy teams or academy running teams. The licensing process has been delayed since 2019, partly as a result of the disruption caused by COVID-19. Over recent months, an expert panel convened by the RFL and the Super League Europe had considered 15 applicants. Key decisions that were agreed by the clubs before the process began were for the license term to be extended to six years because of the long-term nature of player development and for the importance of the community game to be factored into deliberations. That led to an agreement that a maximum of 12 licenses should be awarded up to nine in the core affinity areas and two in the emergency areas as up to one in France. The rationales for this were as followed. This is a statement from the Rugby League um, website um, and what they said to, for the academies to be considered as elite. So for the first one, to ensure that the academies are operated sensitively and proportionately to continue in the good health of the community game. That the number of players selected for academies is proportionate to the number of players within the community game at a relevant age and that the players selected have a genuine opportunity to progress into the Super League and national teams. The talent, that the talent pool is extended beyond the traditional heartland of the sport. You'll see why I'm making that face in a few moments. So those are the three cases. The panel was chaired by Air Commodore Dean Andrew OBE. The RFL representation was led by Dave Rotherham, uh, Chief Fallen Field Officer, also including um, Mark Lovering. Director of Participation and Development, Samantha Allen, Head of Professional Game Delivery, and Portal Medley, National Player Progression Manager. The panel also included Duncan Trustwell, Sports England's strategic lead for performance and talent, who shared a wealth of expertise for the sport. So I'm going to leave a list of the 10 clubs who are right there who are of league status now so clubs whose applications were unsuccessful have been provided with an explanation and advised that they'll be able to reapply in 2024 these clubs will be able to operate development academies which are run in conjunction with further education institutes and play in a highly competitive college competition this does not cause the same level of disruption to the community game, with the matches being played over winter and spring. Some early, early club, uh, Super League clubs even, will be required to run a reserves when that competition returns in 2022, and other clubs will have the option to apply to do so. 
the 2021 Academy season, which begun in a revised format last weekend followed delay, following delays enforced by COVID-19, will continue to, uh, scheduled with this announcement time to provide certainty for players and clubs heading into 2022. So Dean Andrew OBE, we thank all the clubs for their application and the work that went into them. This has been a robust and rigorous process with an emphasis on quality of, and realism. We did not work to award a number of a set number of licenses, but to ensure those licenses awarded were to truly elite academies, and to bear in mind the importance of protecting the community game. It's been said a lot in this statement, community game, community game. Community games get funding from the trusts and the academies that are running currently. Plus, whenever a player gets picked up by an academy, no matter what level of club, the clubs that get that have those players follow those players for the rest of the career. If you don't believe me, have a look at Saddleworth's Saddleworth Rangers a Twitter account. They're looking at all their former players that have gone on to the bigger and better things. It makes no sense to completely tie down elite on top of non-elite. It should be a tier system, to be fair, so that no academy gets left behind. But I digress. I'm not onto that point yet. So to, to finish off the statement, uh, Duncan Treswell, it was a real privilege to get an in intimate understanding of the elite player pro development program being delivered within the applicant clubs. Many clubs have a great track record of consistently developing el senior elite players for England, and yet their commitments to iterate and develop their programs in order to continue the optimal attraction, remain and progress, progress players really shone through. It was a competitive process and there were inevitably some difficult choices to be made. However, as one of the two independent panel members reviewing the submissions and overseeing the process, I was impressed by its robustness and rigour. All of the applicants should be commended for their efforts that they put into the process and their commitment to the development of players and the game. Okay. So that's my glass half full part of the actual story. And I'm going on to the glass half empty, as reported by uh, loverofbeleague.com. I was going to have a look into the glass half empty side. Um, Bradford, Castleford and Hulk KR have been omitted from the RFL list of elite academies licenses for the period 2022 to 2027. The governing body announced the 10 successful clubs, with Lee and Salford thought to be the other applicants to be rejected. Up until six months ago, there were 14 elite academies before Witness decided to close theirs, citing funding challenges following their relegation to the championship and change to part-time status. That makes sense. Um, it's, it used to be a million pound was lost per season by any club that got relegated, and the change to part-time status makes that even more now. Super League Central funding was really, really good for all the professional clubs. And in the Championship, I think there's only three that are full-time. And maybe more. I'm not, I can't get the numbers off my head at the moment. But they're funded by their own clubs, by their own owners. The salary cap doesn't take too much on that front. Anyway, I digress. So, the club reaction, Bradford, who produced the likes of Sam Burgess, 
John Bateman and Jamie Peacock were far from happy with the announcement and issued a strongly worded statement. It reads, Bradford Bulls are incredibly shocked and disappointed and perplexed by this morning's decision not to grant the club an elite academy license. We are struggling to understand the RFL strategy uh, that apparently prevents young Bradford players playing for Bradford. The decision, if left to stand, is immensely damaging to the sport, the city and the welfare of 90 plus young players and staff. They put a great emphasis on their youth pro products. Whether they go on to other clubs because they're good enough to play Super League level, unfortunately their club isn't there at this point, or they play for Bradford. They play them quite. They play them. They play them. That's all it is. The club did not receive any detailed feedback at this stage, so we'll be. Re reserving our position until that is received we have a better understanding as uh, and we have a better understanding as we why the RFL believes the extremely productive line of talent can be laid to waste they weren't the only ones that issued another statement Castleford joined there and said they were devastated at the news and that and they had been informed they were rejected due to other clubs being situated nearby. One of those clubs I've listed here is very close by, but I don't think it's a bigger club than Castleford. Make up your mind which one of that is. That's in my opinion, no one else's. That's my own opinion on that front. And it it proves that the Casper are a bigger club because they're in the top six consistently. Anyway, so their statement said the f early feedback was given as the as to the reason that Castleford Tigers has not been awarded elite academy licenses due to the large number of clubs in the small geographic location, and that since 2014 the club has been bottom of the league for producing first team players. However, the process has not taken into account the appearance of long-standing all-ground academy talent such as Mark, Michael Shenton, Adam Milner, Nathan Massey, Oliver Holmes, James Clare, Greg Eden and Liam Watts, just to name some of the players within um, the Castleford first team setup. Throughout the last academy's process, the club has invested millions of pounds into the club's youth system and structure. As a result, of this, we have de we are determined to develop a hybrid system alongside our current college of rugby league and elite player pathways. So, the third club, Hell KR, a um, little bit of history. They previously teamed up with Hull FC to form a City of Hull Academy before that was disbanded and the club reverted to their individual setup in 2019. Hulls and Hull KRs had their own academy after that again. Um, said that they will take time to reflect on the matter and make no comments at this time. That says it all. They've gone back into their own academy for the last two years and they've decided and they've been told they can't do academy status anymore. How much money has gone into that to re-establish re that academy? It's terrible, to be honest. Like Bradford statement said, players from the academy or the Bradford area cannot play for Bradford at this point. They'll be more likely scooped up by the academy pro uh, programs in different areas. They're, say, they're saying it's a positive process in the RFL and Super League for this academy. Uh, elite academy status, but if they're doing 12, they need to bring up two more. I know they were going to drop down from 14 to 12 because the funding was go has gone down for the big Super League clubs and the TV deals. 
and they had to distribute it a bit more fairly so that the championship clubs get a bit more m money and also the league, what, league one. These are some of the comments from the people that actually watch rugby league. At Dancraft94 stated uh, two days ago, Rugby League is run by idiots and you've got hundreds of kids that were developing at Rovers, Cass and Bradford, etc. Suddenly told, no point anymore lads, all the best. Absolutely baffling. If the club wants to run an academy, they should be encouraged not to be, not to, <laughs> not made to jump through imaginary hoops. It's the energy, and people, people are getting frustrated. Well, I'm getting from it. For instance, Offbeat RL at Bazaar RL puts on this: the energy I'm putting into supporting English rugby is starting to feel not worth it now. I would generally miss the sport if it went away, but it's harder and harder to see a future for the game at the elite level. Christ. Carl Price at Hightower22. Yes, that Carl Price. Can someone please explain why clubs are getting academy licenses turned down? I clearly don't know the I, I clearly don't know the ins and outs, but I only see this as a bad thing for the game in the long run. It's all right. There should be no one left behind. This is all about money. How much money each club gets. It's not like football where each each person that's in the academy system from the government gets X amount of money. I know that sum of money as well. And it's a big amount of money. And each club gets it. That's why they're able to run these men's teams. Lots of them. But the central funding in rugby league is going to work out completely different. But the pot's gone smaller. So we have to get smaller amounts of uh, super uh, of academies. If they're going to add two more to this pot, as they were going to do 12, they'd have to wait until 2024 now. They should have looked at it a bit more clearer, because it's wrong. They are hindering the sport. I don't know what to say. I'm a rugby league fan. And other, other rugby leagues are getting funding from their central side uh, to make sure that they are running academy teams. The NARL, for instance, part of the grants that they get are going to be because they have got a junior, t junior league up and running, junior teams. If they don't, then they lose money, which means that they'll look at other places for their teams to be. It needs to be done properly. Anyway, <sighs> that's my two penny thing. That's it for another video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Also. Remember the race to 100 is going on, so share the videos all the way around the world. The more people that subscribe, the quicker you get your t-shirts. Don't forget, 10 of you will win those t-shirts. They're waiting, they're in there, they're all packed up. And it doesn't cost you anything apart from clicks of a button. Oh well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.